In the past year, far-right political parties and movements have been gaining more and more support in Europe. For example, during the past parliamentary elections in France, the far-right National Front, led by Marie Le Pen, got more than 20% of votes. The significant support for the far-right parties is also in Greece, Germany, Italy, Hungary. So what is the current situation um, on, on this area and what are the recent trends with far-right parties in Europe? We'll be discussing in our uh, Ukraine Today newsroom with Senior Research Fellow of the Institute for Euro-Atlantic Cooperation, Dr. Andreas Umland. Dr. Umland, many thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, um, uh, Dr. Umland, what is the situation with far-right parties and uh, what do you take of this, of this rise for their support uh, among the Europeans? I would say that uh, this rise was almost to be expected after the deep recession of the years 2009-2010. Um, the uh, whole situation in Europe became more instable and uh, against this background the rise of such parties is almost natural. However, I would not overestimate this. We had these waves of right-wing right support, rising right-wing support in earlier periods and usually after a while these waves then go down again. It looks like uh, Kremlin is, is trying, uh, is doing its best uh, to, to finance the political parties which uh, try to bring the European Union apart. Um, how much of true is, is it is that in, in the statement? Well, I think there have been uh, many speculations in the past about um, uh, Moscow's support for various right-wing and other radical movements in, inside the European Union. But with regard to the Front National, the National Front of France, we know it now for sure that there has been a, a large uh, credit uh, grant provided to the um, Front National for the uh, electoral for its electoral campaign, and the reasons for that are obvious. Uh, there are various, actually. Uh, first of all, uh, the Kremlin does not have any. Um, significant political partners anymore among the parties of the European Union. So in a way the radical parties of the uh, radical left and radical uh, right are the only ones left now that uh, are still closely cooperating with the Kremlin and uh, that are ready to support Moscow. The other reason is that the um, European Union and Russia are now competitors uh, much more so than before in Eastern Europe, especially concerning uh, the Europe, uh, Ukraine and the European Union is now, at least from the point of view of Moscow, following a course that is contrary to Russian national interests as it is defined by the Kremlin. And that's why Putin is trying to weaken um, the European Union and one of the instruments of this is support for Eurosceptic parties, parties that want to break up the European Union, that want to weaken the European Union, that want, want to go back to the old principle of the national state. Well, uh, Russia's um, ideology uh, during the last 50 years was the fight with uh, fascism, the fight with uh, right-wing extremism. Uh, and um, they labeled the, the Ukrainian government, which came to power just a year ago, as, as fascist right-wing extremists. At the same time, they are financing the right-wing parties in, in Europe. Um, do you think that, but at, at the, also at the same time, they have the Kremlin has a great support among uh, the Russian population uh, for trying to bring down the fascism here in Ukraine. So uh, do you think that um, these, these ties, uh, Russia's ties to uh, the far right parties in Europe uh, could uh, bring reputational damage to, to, to Kremlin back in Russia? Well, they could if uh, we had a, a freer mass media in Russia, but currently the mass media is uh, tightly controlled by the Kremlin and all of these uh, contradictions are interpreted in a way so as to make uh, the Kremlin look good. And that's why um, only few of the intellectuals will actually see the, the contradictions and the, and, and the deep uh, problems with this whole course. It is not something that unusual we had in Soviet history already this uh, sort of cynic approach to foreign policies, for instance, Stalin's cooperation uh, with uh, Nazi Germany uh, at the beginning of World War II until uh, the Soviet Union was attacked.
Act. And also in later periods, there were strange coalitions between the Soviet uh, leadership and also not left-wing forces in the uh, in uh, around the world. And now we also have this uh, this rather strange and bizarre contradiction that the Kremlin presents itself as an anti-fascist force, but in fact is supporting many of the parties that may not be fascists, only some of them I would classify of, of, as fascist, but that, that have an apologetic um, discourse about um, interwar ultranationalism, including um, um, German Nazism and, and Italian fascism. Well, definitely with having a great support among uh, these far-right parties uh, in Europe, um, Russia is expecting that they will be uh, blocking any further attempts of the EU to um, either uh, prolong the sanctions uh, which are currently imposed on Russia or, um, or, or block the, uh, the new sanctions. Do you think um, this, is, this is possible, that these uh, political forces might actually influence EU's foreign policy towards Russia? I don't think their polit political potential is so far strong enough to do so. They will try, and we had already in the in earlier periods, we had attempts by uh, far-right parties in the European Parliament to sort of slower Euro the European integration of, of Ukraine. Uh, but so far, uh, the votes they have were not sufficient. The political leverage they have uh, is, is not sufficient. Now, obviously, uh, the Greek government is one of the major allies, one could say, of, uh, of Russia. But Greece is, within the European Union, now a relatively weak actor because it is dependent on support from the European Union. So I think at the end of the day, the, um, the potential to do so actually will be limited and um, uh, the mainstream politics is not going to be su um, substantially influenced by it. Well, Dr. Ulan, based on your uh, research and your analysis of the current situation in Europe, do you see a potential for the um, escalation, for the rise of uh, right-wing parties in any other European countries apart from the ones where the, 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 currently, the, the rise is currently present? Well, I guess the most worrisome uh, country is Russia because there this uh, far-right discourse is now becoming more and more uh, mainstream. Uh, the Kremlin has picked up many of the themes that in the 90s were only promoted by uh, extreme nationalists and which are now becoming uh, universally or almost universally accepted in mainstream um, uh, Russian politics. Um, of course there are also other countries within the European Union where uh, one could see that uh, perhaps they, might, they may have in the future problems as well. That again that is very difficult to predict because it's it, it's usually a complicated uh, combination of structural factors and also agency you need to for instance a popular leader for for to pick up such an electorate and there may be an electorate for a far-right parties but if there's no effective organization with a popular leader this may never materialize into uh, some sort of electoral uh, support with um, the fact that Russia is almost openly supporting the, the uh, France's uh, national front um, being revealed in, in, in the mass media, uh, do you think that Russia will be trying to uh, conceal any, any further attempts to um, support any other uh, far-wing parties or they will proceed uh, with their policies as, as they have been right now? Well, well, it's difficult to say because um, it's a very ambivalent situation because uh, uh, the support is one thing, but uh, the support becoming known in the public is both for the Kremlin and for the far-right parties a risky game, so to say. And um, it's very difficult to, to predict which kind of risk they want to take uh, because uh, Marine Le Pen can claim that she has good relations with the Kremlin and some people in France may see that as an advantage, but others may see that as, an, as a disadvantage. Also, uh, the Front National is then becoming sort of hostage to Putin's policies. So in the moment that Putin's policies become more aggressive again, that may become then an image problem for the Front National. So um, it's very difficult to predict how, how the Kremlin will behave. We have, however, the suspicion that there might be more support for far-right parties than is known publicly. Uh, we have 
have only really confirmed information about the Front National so far. Uh, we also think that East European far-right parties may have been supported by the Kremlin, maybe in Hungary, maybe in Bulgaria. We don't have documentation for that. And I think one of the reasons is that the East Europeans, because they are geographically closer to Russia, are more sensitive to this issue. And there, I think for these parties, it could be much more of a problem if uh, Russia becomes even more aggressive and then it is revealed that it has been supporting some internal forces in these countries. Dr. Umwan, many thanks uh, for coming to us and for talking to us. This was Volodymyr Suhu for Ukraine Today, together with a senior research fellow for Institute of Euro-Atlantic Cooperation, Dr. Andreas Umland. Thank you for watching us.